Okay, let's get going. Hi and welcome to this next lesson. This is Paul Frew from O2 Engineering Services and Adam Barton who will be managing the chat pod and also helping out on the screen. And tonight we're looking at actually RLC series circuits. So I didn't mention before we're looking at RC but um, I didn't get all the details for the RC so we're going to jump straight to the RLC series circuits. Uh, but if you've seen the RL circuit and you've seen the capacitance, hopefully this will all come together now. So just a quick overview of what we've done over the last few weeks and if you're watching this presentation, this is what we've covered over the last uh, previous presentations if you want to go back and watch those. So we've talked about the different types of components in AC circuits. We've talked about phase relationships where voltage and current are in phase with a resistive circuit and that's the phase of representation. We've also looked at inductive circuits where voltage and current are out of phase by 90 degrees and that's the phase of representation. And we looked at capacitive circuits where voltage and current are out of phase by 90 degrees except this time the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. And we looked at the impedance triangle and labelled it and we've done some exercises where we've actually worked out the angle of phase difference between voltage and current. Our last Last lesson we looked at capacitors in an AC circuit where we actually did an experiment where we had two different size capacitors and we saw the difference uh, that the current made when we had different size capacitors. We showed by increasing the capacitance the current went up which means that something caused that and the word that we used for the opposition to current flow with the capacitive circuit is known as capacitive reactants with the letters XC and the symbol ohms. And we talked about what the factors are which, um, which will affect capacitive reactants. And we looked at the factors affecting capacitive reactants. We did some equations. And we did the impedance triangle for a purely capacitive circuit. And we showed the phase relationships with a crow. And there's our phase relationship. So that was last we uh, last lesson. So tonight we're going to look at the RLC series circuit. So even though I might have said RC, we're looking at RLC series circuit. So we have we'll have a, a resistor and an inductor. So the inductor represents the L, and the capacitor represents the C. Now this is the circuit we're going to be using and there's a 1 ohm resistor at the end and it's used as a crow shunt. I will explain that at the very end of this presentation what that means. So this is our circuit that we're actually using. So the 390 or 40 watt ballast, we're actually going to be using a 6.8 microfarad capacitor even though it said 48 at the start and a 1 ohm crow shunt. Now we're going to inject 30 milliamps into the circuit. So we've done that and we, so what we're going to do is we're going to do some calculations first and then I will show you what the measurement, what actually worked out to be. So let's start off. This is the, but we will need to work out the voltage drop across the first resistor, the 390 ohm resistor. And it's just 30 milliamps times 390. So if you've got your calculators there, if you want to have a go at working that out. Okay, Theodore's got his hand up. So if you've got a question there, Theodore, you can put it into the chat pod if you like. Okay, if you're on your calculator, you would type in 30 by 10 to the power of X. Thank you, Jay. And that's the by 10 to the power of X button on your calculator minus, that's that button on your calculator, and because it's milliamps we type in the number 3, and then we multiply that by 390, and hit the equal sign. So just try that on your calculator, make sure your 
And yes, it is volts because we're working out the voltage drop. So this is um, very similar to your DC circuit principles where you're just working out the voltage drop or the pressure drop across a resistor. So we've got some different answers coming through. So J and Theodore's, well J says 11.7 .7 volts, Theodore's saying 11.7 ohms, but then he's corrected to be volts. Eric's got another number there, so I don't know if Shane's got his calculator there. Okay, so what do you, okay. So the answer works out to be 11.7 volts. Very good. And this is what we actually measured across that resistor. Across the 390 ohm resistor, we got 12.3 volts. So mathematically, we got 11.7. And we actually worked out we got 11.7 or 12.33 was actually measured, and 11.7 is what we, we calculated. OK, the voltage drop across the ballast. Now we do V equals I times Z. And then what we do, there is our Z. Now this is actually from a previous uh, lesson. So if you look back at our previous lesson, you will you will find this information here. So it's 30 milliamps times 500.95. And if you've got your calculators there, I'll just quickly show you to put it in the calculator. So 30 by 10 to the power of x. That's that button on your calculator there. Minus, that's that button there. 3 times 500.95, see how you go, what, what answer you get on your calculator. Okay, we've got some different answers coming through again. OK, good. So let's have a look. 15 volts, and I've, I've ran it up to 15 volts. And when we actually measured it, we got 13.99, or roughly 14 volts. So about a volt out. And just remember, the ballast that I actually used the impedance triangle from it was not the same ballast as we're using in this practical. So there may be just a little bit of variances, but we're pretty close on the um, I'm doing the calculation, what we measured. OK, cross the capacitor. So V equals I times XC. Does anyone remember what XC represents? If I want to put on this in the chat pod what XC represents. Excellent, Eric and Nick. Very good. So it represents capacitive reactants. So we've got 30 milliamps times with a question mark here. So how do we work out the capacitive reactants? Well, there's an equation there. Xc equals 1 over 2 pi Fc. So we're going to have 1 over 2 times pi times 50 times 6.8 microfarads. So I'll if you've got your calculators there, I'll just quickly just show you how to use it, but you'll need to put, put these values in. So you do 1 divided by, now you need to put the bottom part in brackets, so just make sure you click the bracket button there on your calculator. Then you go 2 times, then you hit the shift button, which is that button there. Pi, which is down near where the t times 10 to the power of x button is in the yellow. Times 50 times 6.8 by 10 to the power of x, and that's that button there, by minus, could someone tell me if it's minus 3, 6, 9 or 12 we put in now for micro? Excellent. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Shane. Thank you, Theodore. Thank you, Nick. Excellent. Minus 6.
then hit the then close the brackets, and that's that button on your calculator, and then you hit the equal sign. So see what you get on your calculators. Okay, so X has 468.102. Oh, we've got a different answer there, 213468820 by 10 to the power of minus 6. Well, we're getting all different answers coming through here. And Adam's asked a very good question, what is the unit for XC? What's XC measured in? What's XC measured in? Thank you, Eric, it's in measured in ohms. Okay, so 468 ohms is what you should be getting on your calculators. Yeah, and as Adam says, well done. Now we'll keep on going now. So we've got 468, so we'll do 30 milliamps times 468. Again, I've just rounded it off. And on your calculator, you go 30 by 10 to the power of x, that's button there, minus, that's that button there, 3 for milli times 468 equals, we'll see what your answer comes out. Okay, so Jay says 14.04 volts. And if you watch this presentation, you can certainly pause it and Try and work it out. Eric says 14 volts. Okay, so let's have a look. Up. And to see what Theodore's come up with. Okay, Theodore's got the drop of the same. That's good. So 14 volts is our voltage drop across the capacitor. So we actually measured 14.64. And so it's pretty close there, 14.64. Okay, and finally across the 1 ohm shunt, because we've only got 1 ohm, we've got 30, 30 milliamps times 1 ohm gives us 31 millivolts, which is not a lot of voltage compared to the 14 volts. So we'll probably just disregard that for the continuation on this practical. Now, when I measured the supply, we got 14 volts. So the big question is, we've got 12 volts there, or 12.33 volts there, 14 volts there, 14.64 volts there, 31 millivolts there. How does all of that add up to 14 volts? Doesn't seem right, does it? How does all of that add up to 14 volts? Any guesses in the chat pod? Oh, resistance, okay, we're exchange resistance. Okay, so Shane's given us a bit of a clue there, because it's not just resistive, so well done, Shane, that's right, it's not, we've got a few components there, so let's have a look at those components. So across the 390 ohm resistor, voltage and current are in phase. With the ballast, voltage and current are out of phase. With the capacitor, voltage and current are out of phase, and finally with the crow with the crow shunt, it's in phase again. So we've got a number of items which are in phase and out of phase. So the inductor is the current's lagging the voltage by 90 degrees, and with the capacitor, the current's leading the voltage by 90 degrees. So this is where we're going to have some differences here. So what we've actually got is this is what's I'm just showing, trying to show simulate what's happening here. We've got a number of different voltages, so the VR will be in phase, but your other two voltages will be out of phase by 90 degrees. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a range of voltages. However, the V max will be the same height as the other voltages there. But I'm just trying to show you if you added all those voltages up, it will give you V max. 
but in this case here, the Vmax will be the same as the as all the other voltages, just about. So we're going to have to work this out by phase or addition. Okay, so sorry, Nick, I didn't, I missed your point there. So yes, that's right. We're going to do a phase or addition. And Theodore, no, the ballast is not independent of the system. It's all part of the system. It's all they're all joined together. So, but because the reaction of voltage and current through the ballast is different to say the capacitor, say to the resistor, they all play a part on, on the overall outcome. So we're going to do a phase or addition on this circuit. Now because it's a series circuit we use current as reference and how long does the reference line need to be? You remember how long the reference line could be? Uh, no, not 30 milliamps. Okay. No, okay. Now we can make the reference line as long as we want to make it because it's just a reference line. So there is no length. We're just going to use the reference because current is the same in all parts in a series circuit. So we draw our reference line first. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to draw the line that represents VR, which is 12.33 volts. So we get your ruler on the reference line and we're going to draw a line which is 12.3 mil and make a light mark and then draw a line to represent the 12.3. Finish the arrowhead. So we'll do one part of the arrowhead. We'll just remove the arrowhead. Put our ruler there. Uh, sorry, finish off the arrowhead. And then we're going to label the arrowhead, which is 12.3 at an angle of zero degrees, meaning that voltage and current are in phase through the resistor. Now comes the next part. What we're going to be doing now is plotting the voltage for the ballast, which is 14 volts. Now, normally with a pure inductor, voltage and current are out of phase by 90 degrees, but because we've already done this before, we've, we've got 85.96. So this was done from a previous practical, so it may, it may throw the answers just out a little bit, but if you just get the idea of what we're trying to, to achieve through this presentation, um, because again I'm, I'm using the values from a different ballast. Okay, so that's where the 18.96 is going to go, and as I was just making note here, it will throw some of the values out at the end. But again, for, the, for watching how to do tip to tail method and phaser diagrams, this presentation will be fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move that reference point to the, the tip of the R. So what we're virtually doing is moving that reference there. So we're going to bring in your protractor now and place it on the new reference point. So that's where we're going to put that there. And we're going to plot the 85, we'll make it 86 degrees. And because it's an inductor, the voltage leads the current. So that's why we go in the upwards direction. So make a light mark at 86 degrees. And you probably just barely see it on there. Now remove your protractor, get your ruler, and draw the line that represents 14 volts. and then make a small mark at the end because that will be the new reference point when we remove the ruler. So remove your ruler and complete the arrow header and label.
and then we're going to label it 14 volts at 86 degrees. And the reason why it's positive 86 degrees is because um, because the voltage is lagging the current by a positive uh, answer. Okay, the next one we're going to do now is we're going to move the reference point up to the tip of VL. We're going to put it up to there now, so that's what we're physically doing. We're going to move that point up to there. So here's our new reference point. Now because it's a capacitor, what angle do we need to, to do that at? Any takers, what angle will we do the, the capacitor? Excellent, 90 degrees. But which way, Nick, up or down? Also, not just to Nick, but to everybody else. Will we, will we be going up or down now? Excellent, Jay. We'll be going down because uh, voltage lags the current. And because we've actually moved the reference point up to that point now, we're going to be drawing in the downward direction. So very good. So get your protractor and place it on the new reference point, but in the correct direction, which we've already ascertained. So very good. And we're going to make a note there. We're going to draw it at 90 degrees. So I'm just showing what, the, what we're looking at there. Make a small mark at 90 degrees. You may just see it on the, on the screen there. And then you're going to remove your protractor and measure a line that represents 14.6. And you bring your ruler up, and it's back to front there. Um, the joys of Adobe with PowerPoint sometimes it it turns them back to front. So you'll measure that at 14.6. So sorry about that. I didn't even notice that until sometimes sometimes it does that. It just automatically just flips it around for for whatever reason. Okay, so. If you're doing this, if you're watching this presentation and you're measuring this, you should be able, you should be getting that value there. So you remove the ruler and finish off the arrow header and label it correctly. And that's what we're measuring there, the 14.6, and we're going to call it VC 14.6, and we put that angle minus 90 degrees because we're going in the minus 90 degree angle. Now where that finishes back to the start is now the supply voltage and we should be getting 14 volts if we've done it correctly and we've done it to scale. So get your ruler, measure from where we started, the tail of VR to the tip of VC and we should measure 14 volts. Now if you notice there, I didn't get 14 volts, so I've got about 13.2 or 3 and that's because I'm, the ballast was a little bit out because um, I was using a different ballast to get my angle because I didn't actually measure that one there that I was using. Um, but it's pretty close to what we what we should have got. So if you've actually done this correctly with a with the correct information there, or even if you're just doing this mathematically, and you're just doing the pure maths of it, it will work out. Again, I'm just doing this from a practical ex or an experiment that I was doing in class yesterday. So if you draw a line that represents the V supply and then do the arrowheads, that will be the total supply. So look where it ends up. It ends up back on the line again. So the question now I have now, what angle do we have between the supply voltage and current? Does so someone like to put that into the chat pod? What is the angle between voltage and current? No, it's actually, no, so Jay and Nick is, and, and are correct, it's in phase, not quite four degrees, actually it's on the line there, Theodore, so 
it's actually in phase with the the red the red line is in phase with the 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 current. Now I'm going to show you something now how how we can actually see whether or not they're in phase. But we need a special tool or special measuring instrument to be able to detect this. And the way we're going to do that, I'll just say that it's in phase. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to use what they call as a crow, cathode ray oscilloscope. Sorry, cathode ray oscilloscope. So to do that, we're going to have channel one and channel two. Now channel one is will have the red lead connected there. Channel two will have the red lead connected there, and both the channel the crow earths. Now the crow earths go to the frame of the crow. They will go back to the respective channels. So have a look at channel one. What is channel one measuring across? Just have a look at the look at the diagram. What do you think channel one is measuring across? Which voltage drop is it picking up? So a crow. A, for those of the first time we're watching this, a crow actually measures voltage. It actually picks up the actual wave waveform from the supply. So what is the voltage that the channel one is measuring? So you've got one red lead at the top end of the resistor, and you've got a black lead at the other end. What is it measuring? Excellent, Theodore. Channel one is actually measuring across the whole system. Very good. So it's it's actually measuring the supply voltage. Now channel two, if you notice here, it's a one ohm crow shunt. So we've got the 30 milliamps going through there. The one uh, the channel two is actually simulating. It's actually simulating the supply current. Even though it's actually measuring a voltage, which is only 31 millivolts, it's actually simulating the supply current. And if you look at the crow, if you notice that the two waves are in phase. There's actually two waves there. And I should have actually made one, one a bit smaller to show you that. So the two waves are in phase. So voltage and current in phase. That's how we, how we can actually see physically, after doing all the mathematics with the phasor diagrams, that um, how we can actually see whether or not voltage and current are in phase. Now, just to quickly show you, I, I, what I did also afterwards, I actually swapped over the 6.8 microfarad with a 47 microfarad capacitor, and I measured the. Uh, I used the crow again to do the measurements, and if you notice here, we've got the voltage and current are out of phase, and that measurement, the first measurement, represents D, which is the distance between the two waves. And that's representing the time of a one cycle, the T. And if we do D divided by T times 360, that will give us the angle of difference between the two waves on the crow. Well, that comes to the end of tonight's lesson. Has anyone got any questions about the lesson at all tonight? I know it's nice and short and sweet, but uh, it doesn't. I wish it took. I wish it was short and sweet to put together, but hopefully it made a bit of sense of how an RLC series circuit works. And when you're doing questions on RLC, RLC circuits, how to do calculations, and this will come in handy when we do uh, series resonance to understand this concept here, where we're looking at these circuits here. So before I stop the recording, has anyone got any questions at all? I'm glad you found it stimulating, and that's actually good. It's good to stimulate the brain. And thank you, Jay. Thank you, Nick. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you very much for watching, and for those who are watching the presentation, I hope you also. Uh, have expanded your knowledge on RLC series circuits.